Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beardman. Today, we're going to be back on physicsclassroom.com, taking a look at the concept builder titled Coulomb's Law, which is under the topic static electricity. So the concept here with Coulomb's Law, um, what we're actually looking at here is the relationships within it. You won't be calculating using this equation in this concept builder. But this is the equation for Coulomb's Law, which is about uh, a force attracting or repelling two charged objects. Okay, your sock and the tablecloth that are stuck together after going through the dryer. How much force is pulling them together? The, the charge of the sock, the charge of the tablecloth. Once again, the charge of the two objects. F is the force between them. K is a constant, uh, electrostatic constant or Coulomb's constant. It is always this number, but that will not be important today because it's the same for every calculation. Okay, and today we're looking at relationships how one thing changes when another thing changes. And the last one is the distance between them. Sometimes you'll see this as d squared. Uh, here I'm labeling it as r squared. All right. Um, the next thing we need to do is see what the relationships are in this equation. We can see if one of the q's gets bigger, like if this were to get bigger, that would make the numerator bigger, which would make f bigger. Okay, so this is a relationship we call directly proportional, and it means as one variable changes, like if we may have twice as much charge, one of the two things has twice as much charge, the sock has twice as much charge, uh, the other one changes, but that says changes, changes by the same factor in the same direction. So if this gets twice as big, this will be twice as big. If there's twice as much charge on one of the objects, the force between the two charges will be twice as big. If the charge between the two objects is one-third the value, the force will be one-third its original value. Then if we want to look at the distance between them, if we move our sock and our tablecloth apart, um, then the distance between them is r. And so if we change r, we can see that's in the denominator. If we make this bigger and make the denominator bigger, that's going to make f smaller. That's the inverse part here. When one gets bigger, the other one gets smaller, and vice versa. If this gets smaller, we're dividing by a smaller number. That's going to give us a bigger number. But we also have the fact that r is being squared. That's the quadratic part. Okay. So we see that f is proportional to the inverse of the square of r. So inversely quad, inverse quadratically proportional. So as r changes, f changes by the square of the factor. In other words, if we make this two times bigger, the square of two times bigger is four times bigger. The square of the factor in the opposite direction. So if this is getting two times bigger and this is getting four times bigger, this is going to get four times smaller, or divide it by four. If this were to get three times smaller, this would get nine times smaller, three squared. Nine times smaller, if we're dividing by a number that's nine times smaller, f will get nine times bigger. Let's get to put this into practice. So this is like the apprentice level. They call it charge changes. Okay, kind of fun. Um, and so remember our basic idea when the charge is changing, it's directly proportional. So if this doubles, this doubles, which we're going to see in the first one here that the charge of object one is halved, meaning it's cut in half. We also see that they originally attracted with a force of 30 units. Maybe I should read this. Objects one and two attract each other with an electrostatic force of 30 units. Um, this could be Newtons, for example, but they're being more generic here. If the charge of object one is halved, then the new electrostatic force will be, okay, so with some charge, it had 30 units. Now with half that charge, what's gonna happen? Well, if this gets cut in half, this gets cut in half. So what's half of 30? Half of 30 is 15. Okay, they're going the same direction. We're going to blaze through these. All of these I started with the same sentence. They all start with an electrostatic force of 30. Um, in the concept builder, you'll see a different number here, so pay attention to that. If the charge of object one 
is tripled. And by the way, we're multiplying object one times object two, so it wouldn't matter if this said object one or object two. They would both have the same effect. Um, so if this is tripled three times bigger, this has to be three times bigger. What's three times bigger than, than uh, 30 would be 90. Okay. Over here, we see we've got uh, 32. Oh, so I did change. It is 32. Look at that. And object two is tripled. Okay, that means that this is going to have to be tripled times 3, which would give us 96, 32 times 3. Oh, I did not read carefully. <laughs> Big lesson, always read carefully. Okay, so there, was, there were two things going on here. You can see that object 1 is doubled and object 2 is tripled. So we have to take this, multiply by 2, two for object one being doubled that gives us 64 okay so that gives us 64 and then we see it is being tripled so that's going to be times three so 64 times three is let's see two carry the one 192 Okay, so 192 would be our force there. Once again, because one of them doubled, so we doubled the amount of force. The other one tripled, so we tripled that amount of force, um, and we get 192. By the way, it wouldn't have mattered if we tripled it first and then doubled it. You're multiplying by 2 and then multiplying by 3. The order of operations doesn't matter when you're, when you're multiplying, just multiplying. All right, so then down here we see that we have 32. Object 1 is halved, so that means we're taking 32. We're halving it, dividing by 2. That will give us 16. All right, on to the master level. So here at the master level, now it's called distance matters. We see the inverse square relationship or inverse quadratic relationship. And so uh, we look in here, we see our original force is 40 units. We see that the distance is changed to one half. So if R is one half the size, I'm going to say two times smaller. Okay, so half the size, two times smaller. Two squared is four, so the denominator is going to be four times smaller. But because it's inverse, this is going to get four times bigger. Okay, so we'll take our original number here, times four, and we have 160. All right, next one. Once again, we're starting with 40 units, and this one is changing to one-third of the original value. So if this is three times smaller, this is nine times smaller, three squared, nine times smaller that means this is nine times bigger so nine times 40 gives us 360 units of force all right next we see again we're starting with 40 units of force originally then we're seeing it's being doubled okay so if this number is two times bigger doubled two times bigger and we square that that's four times bigger we're dividing by that, so if this is four times bigger, this is going to be four times smaller. In other words, divided by four. 40 divided by four is 10. Okay, then our last problem here, we see that we're starting with 50 units. Okay, and uh, it is getting Five, the distance is getting five times greater. Okay, so if this is five times greater, square that, 25 times greater. Since we're dividing by something 25 times greater, that's going to make the force 25 times smaller. Okay, so the, the 50 will be divided by 25, 25 times smaller, and that gives us 2 units. 50 divided by 25 is 2. Finally, we're going to put those together in putting it all together. 
um, and we see that uh, we have, uh, once again, a starting amount of force, in this case, 45 units to start out with. And we see two things happen. We see the charge is halved. Let's deal with that first. So if the charge is halved, okay, that means we're dealing with charge, so directly proportional. If this gets halved, this gets halved. Two times smaller, two times smaller. So that means we're going to take this and divide by 2, which gives us 22.5. Okay, when you get a decimal, you might want to do the other one first, um, but because the order of operations doesn't matter because we're multiplying and dividing. So let's see what the other one is. We see the distance, the distance between the two objects is tripled. So if the distance is tripled, that means r squared is nine times bigger. And because we're dividing, if this is nine times bigger, this is nine times smaller. Okay, so we're going to take this and divide by nine, which gives us, drum roll, 22.5 divided by nine gives you 2.5, which it might have been easier to take this and divide by 9, because most of you know 45 divided by 9 is 5, and then divide by 2, which gives you your 2.5. 2.5 units. All right, then if we take a look at our next one, we see that we're starting with 30 units. If the charge of object 1 is doubled, so a charge is being doubled, remember charge and force are directly proportional, so if we double the charge, we double the, uh, the force, so that takes us to 60 units. Then we see that the other charge is being one-third, so three times smaller, or divided by three. So that means we're going to have to take this and divide by three. 60 divided by three gives us 20. Okay, and then finally, we see that the distance is being doubled. Okay, distance is inverse quadratic. So if this is two times bigger, two squared is four. So this is four times bigger. We're dividing. So four times bigger makes this four times smaller. So we're dividing by four. 20 divided by four is five. So you will have five units of force. All right, so this is looking at, once again, we looked at the two relationships uh, in the equation for uh, Coulomb's law, the force between two charges. And we saw that I, if either ch uh, charge changes, that's going to change the force in the same way by the same factor. If the distance changes, we saw that was inverse quadratic or inverse square. Um, different teachers will call that different things. So inverse quadratic or inverse square. And so if this changes by a factor, you have to square that factor and then send the force in the opposite direction because it's in the denominator. All right. I hope you enjoyed learning with me. Uh, good luck puzzling through those uh, relationships in Coulomb's Law Concept Builder on physicsclassroom.com. We'll see you next time.